pleased to have Jay Shri Shudar. She is the past president of the Rotary Club of Madras, which is the third oldest club in India. Uh, it's the oldest club in South uh, India. And they say that in South India, all of the clubs come out of one club. Some other Rotary clubs in South India, which is a very expansive area. And it's in the city of Chennai, which is the old name or the new name for Madras. But uh, I'm just going to give you a few statistics and then I'm going to let her have her own presentation. Uh, she's been the chair of the Women's Employment, uh, Empowerment, Education, and Training Centers. They do 1,200 women and girls a year. And I figured it out for the 35 years that she's been uh, working at this project. It's 166,000 women and girls that have been trained in certifications and actually access to equipment, sewing machines, and all kinds of things that they need uh, to sustain themselves. She's a media consultant. She does uh, work with a number of different TV stations and content creation and also short films creator and editor at the same time. She's very, very busy. Uh, but to her club, uh, the Rotary Club of Madras, just want to give you an idea of the scale of the global grants that they're doing. This is not a challenge for our club, but just give you, a, give you an idea. Uh, on their 3-H grants, uh, they, they helped build a children's hospital, $680,000. Uh, they built a polio rehab center, 500000 These are all not rupees, but U.S. dollars. Um, and they had a project which is uh, just started. This is for water harvesting for 100 schools that had no water. And uh, it's going to be uh, over 100,000 students that were served by that. They wanted us to be the, the uh, international partner for that. And it's just too soon to get into the cycle. Uh, but it's just amazing the size and scale of what this club is doing. And so this is with, this is with 280 million. We're doing these kinds of global grants. Um, and also, they're collaborating now and they're internationally. But out of that club, 18 district governors, uh, they sponsored 22 clubs besides all the legacy for the others. Uh, but they also uh, have a number of, uh, have 27 Interact clubs and 10 Rotaract clubs. That's for 280 members. That is a busy, busy club. Let's give them a round of applause. Good afternoon, so my dear friends of the Rotary Club of Washington and the guests. It's a wonderful moment for me to stand here and talk to you. I have a lot of uh, my Indian club members who are logged in. I can see some of them, Rotary Club of Indrani, Krishna, Yad, Shethi, not able to see all the names, but a big thank you to all of you. It makes me feel so special that you are logged on here. It must be 10 p.m. back home. <laughs> so they are all staying up just to hear me address. And this is a special moment for me to address this club. And like uh, Sam said, I think a year and a half back, virtually I addressed this club. The very same topic of women empowerment. But today I'm going to be talking about Rotary Club of Madras itself. So this was my theme when I was president last year. Rotary year 22-23, I was the president of my club. And Engage, Empower and Enrich was my theme. So this is the logos of this year. This year, the name of our president is Rotarian Ravi Sundaretan. And uh, Create Hope in the World is the RIT. Madras Greets. That is the symbol of, that is the logo of my Rotary Club of Madras. And it says, we were chartered in 1929. I was the 94th president. This year is the 95th year. And that is what that logo says. It says 95. 
The other logo says building responsible communities, and that is the theme of this year for Rotary Club of Mesa. So that's where I come from, from Chennai, which is in the southern part of India. A lot of you may be knowing New Delhi, a lot of you may be knowing Bombay. I'm sure many of you would have heard of the city called Madras, which is as famous and it is on the coast of the Bay of Bengal. The same city called Madras now has a new name called Chennai. So that's where I come from. And uh, yes. So a little bit about my city before I talk about the club. So Chennai, Madras, it's a 384 year old city. And uh, as the slide shows, it was founded in the year 1639. Founded by, the city was created by East India Company. They used it as a base for their shipping and trade and other business interests. In a place called Fort St. George, that was the place which was first built by the East India Company. And that is the place where uh, they started having their operations. And from there, they expanded. And all the smaller villages around, this, around Fort St. George came together and today we are a sprawling metropolis. And a modern day Chennai looks like this, like in the pictures. And just to give you an idea of the population, we are an extremely populated metropolis. We are about um, 10 million people. We speak a language called Tamil, which is different from Hindi, which is spoken in the northern part of the country. And that is the very unique thing about India because different parts of India have different cultures. We have a different language. We eat different kinds of food. The ethnicity is also different in parts. And that in the black, uh, uh, what is written in the black slide, in that black part, that is the Tamil language. So the language has also a spoken um, component and it has got a written component also and it is one of the oldest languages known to mankind. So we don't know from when because 2000 years back poetry has been written and it is available for us to read. So we don't know when the language actually came into being. So that is a Tamil word. We are known for art, craft, silk, dance, and music, and a, a warm heart with people. So, I would like to take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome to all of you to my city of Chennai. Rotary Club of Medas will be glad to look after you, take you around to some of these places. Do join us. Yeah. It is also the home to a very big IT industry, and we have a huge automobile industry in Hyundai, and uh, they have the biggest um, manufacturing plant in Asia, Nissan. Everything is located in this city. It is also considered the healthcare capital of India. Like I said, we this city is was created by the British 300 years back, but the things around the city are much older. Like we have monuments in a place called Mahabalipura, where the monuments are the dated, the archaeological department has dated them as 580 to 630 AD. So it is that old. So there are temples, we have the longest beach. And these temples, again, are about 1,000 years old. So the city may be 300 to 400 years old, but the history is there long before that. So that is the unique aspect of Chennai, where I come from. So these are some of the things which I wanted to show you. The colonial past that we have. We have 
it is part of our history and what whatever buildings you see here they are still there there is a book store called higginbottoms which was founded in 1844 and it is still operational there is a santo basilica which was built by the portuguese which is a is a functioning basilica you can visit the place it is beautiful and the fort in george which was built by the british that is where the current head of the state of tamil nadu government they work from there it is the central secretariat for the state government so all these buildings are still there they are very much there for us to go and visit and it is a legacy it is a history which as a citizen of my city we are all very proud Rotary Club of Madras. To be a member of Rotary Club of Madras, and more so to be the past president, I wear this badge with pride because this is the third oldest club. The first, uh, actually, the first club was formed in Calcutta. The second, the Calcutta has just finished their centenary. They have crossed a hundred years. The second one was in Bombay. Um, I have put Mumbai, but that's not the correct one. I corrected the slide, but we could not include it in this. The city of Bombay had the second oldest Rotary Club, and the third was formed in Madras. And like Sam said in his introduction, in South India, we are the oldest. We are third oldest in the whole of the country. after calcutta and bombay in south india we are the oldest and every single club which has been formed in south india south india is either our daughter club or our granddaughter club or there is some connection to the road trip club and it is 95 years of service to the and community engagement and we are still going very strong every year we keep raising the benchmark we keep adding value to the projects that are already there or every president who comes comes with their own set of ideas and we create new opportunities to engage with the community to better their lives so um, rotary club of madras is famous for two things we are the first to bring in the red measles eradication program and the polio eradication program so both were started by my club and we are the pioneers and from there it spread to the whole country and yes the rotary movement of course was most supported but the starting point was the rotary club So that's just a, a old video showing our in, involvement with the uh, measles eradication measles immunization program it all began in 1978-79 at the international assembly in boca raton florida we're partnering on a canada india world community service project it was decided to introduce the measles vaccination into india spearheaded by the iconic dr ken hobbs and our own rotarian chris chitale this program went on to become part of the central government's expanded program of immunization epi with support from the state government this was one of rcm's greatest success stories these are some of our long running projects rcm stands for rotary club of madras so i can give you a little bit information on most of these projects the first one it's called rotary nada so why is it called rotary nada it was uh, an area in it was a, a slum in the city which was full of poverty crime and lawlessness this was many many years ago rotary club of madras took up that slum for interventions and help in the year 1944 so that's how old that project is today 
after so many years. Then the area has been called Rotary Nagar. It means it's like like how you say avenue or development. So Nagar is an Indian name for that. So the area itself has called Rotary Nagar first street, second street. So there are eighteen streets, and yes, there is still poverty. It's not that people there have suddenly become rich, but there is no crime. The women are able to come and attend our classes where reading and digital literacy is taught. They are able to find small jobs in the neighborhood. They are able to start small businesses in their own. And from where they were, today it's a vibrant, lower income world. I would say that. There are children who come. You can see some of the children there. They have classes, after-school classes, where we have engaged teachers to teach them. Now, why is that so important? Is because the parents may not have had the opportunity to study, so they may not be able to help the child. The child goes to a normal school, so we. Rotary Club of Madras has arranged teachers, has arranged um, small computers for them where audiovisual education is also possible to help these children improve themselves. And together, in totality, if you see, that area is like any other normal area where poor people live. So it's not something, it's not an area where, you know, people are afraid to go in People don't go to school. Nothing. It's like a any normal lower income suburb. The fourth block below is called Boys Town. Again, we have been running that for more than twenty-five years, and these are this is a residential facility for boys, only boys, who have either a single parent or no parent, and who do not have the means to go to a school. So we this uh, they stay here in this they attend the local government school, but this is a residential facility for them. They are taught sports, they are taught yoga, they are taught music, they are taught uh, computers. So what would happen to these children without interventions like this? I don't know. Maybe they will just be on the streets. Maybe they will turn to crime. It is hard to figure out what would have gone wrong, but the positive change which we have brought is these children graduate up to O level, A level, and a lot of them have entered colleges. We also have a scholarship program. Many of them have gone to colleges, and we are able to help them pay their fees because once he does that, he can get a job, and You know, that's a whole new life for him, which he would not have had access to otherwise. And that photograph is my favorite subject, which is women empowerment. Who are these women? Again, these are women who could not study beyond class ten. We would call that O level is equivalent to class ten in my country. So why were they not able to go to school beyond that? Economic reasons, social reasons, many reasons. But today, we are able to bring them, teach them skills, vocational skills, where you teach them tailoring, you give them a sewing machine, she can run a business. She does stitching. She has a small business. That's okay, you know. We, we, For them to get a job in mainstream is very difficult. However, we also run a digital literacy center where every person whom we train has been able to come to us. So, so there are you know different uh, capabilities. Those who are good in uh, this kind of uh, tailoring, they are able to run a business, earn some money, and They need the money. They belong to an economic strata where the money that they earn is their livelihood. A lot of them are single women. Well, I, 
just to tell you one thing that before I changed this life. In India, we do not have social security. We do not get a rupee from the government to support you economically at any stage. So these are all people who do not have access to any other source of funds but for interventions by organizations like us, maybe some other NGOs, but I think both is doing a very good uh, So We are very systematic and we are, our interventions have been successful and I would like to place on record the numbers that Sam said. We are training about 1,200 women every year and the project is 35 years old. So, so my year as president was last year and my focus area, it was no surprise. No, no uh, uh, gifts for guessing that I would only do something for women. All my club members had told me, so your team is going to be about women. I said, yes. It is, <laughs> it is women. But I, I was also wanting to do something in the area where it was needed most. Health. Now, why health? Because demographically, Indian cities or a, a lady like me, you see, I don't represent the actual Hindu. If you go 50 kilometers outside of my city, the whole landscape changes. It is rural India. Now, how many of these rural women have access to health? And preventive health is something that they cannot think of. Everybody goes to a hospital the moment they are sick. But then that's too late. So my thought was, can we do something for people like that? Yeah. So undetected breast and cervical cancer remains a major cause of mortality on <coughs> rural women. Why? Because as you all know, cancer, early detection is the key for survival. By the time a person actually realizes that she has breast cancer or cervical cancer without screening by the time she realizes she is in stage 3 where they do not have the wherewithal for medical care, they can't pay. And it's too late. You have missed the opportunity. The early detection window is the best thing that you can do in a cancer treatment. You have to pick it up there and do something. Now, there is no free mammography available in many parts of the country. And if you ask them to, if it's paid mammography, it is like uh, around, uh, say, $40 for a mammogram. Uh, so to earn that money, for them, it's very difficult. To set aside that money, yes, they all earn money. They work every day. But they work, they eat. And the rural part of the country does not offer you jobs with you know huge pay packets, nothing. It's like it's like very you know, every day you make a small sum and you manage your life. There is no way they are going to collect this money, go to a mammogram uh, place, pay it and get it with it. It's very so the cost to individual and infrastructure also is not available. So what did we do? We identified the most backward district. If you see, Chennai is the yellow dot on top. Further down south, we identified a place called Devakote. It's so ironical because Devakote, in English, if I translate it, it means fortress of the god. And this was the most backward area with absolutely no medical facility available and let alone a mammogram facility. There was nothing. And there were 2 million women living in and around four districts. So we set up a digital mammogram unit. That's the only way you can ensure preventive care. Otherwise, they are never going to go and get themselves sick. So we got a CSR donation from one of the largest banks in India. It's called the State Bank of India. And let me explain CSR. In India, every organization, every business which makes a profit 
gives a small percentage of that in the name of corporate social responsibility. That is called CSR. So those funds are available. And only thing they do a full study as to where the money is going, how it's going to be done, how it's going to be run. So we set up a free digital mammogram and that's the medical medical. And the medical partner in this project is Adaya Cancer Institute, which is again one of the most famous institutes in the country. And these are some of our beneficiaries. These are all people who have come to our center, who had their um, digital mammogram done. Yes, very few of them did have, um, they noticed uh, a lump in the breast and they have been referred for higher food. But this is only a small, we, we've done about uh, 280 to 300 people. But you saw the, we, we, are, we are targeting 20 million women. விவசாயம் பண்றோம் ஆடு மாடு வச்சிருக்கோம் பால் கருந்து ஊத்துறோம் ஆஸ்பத்திரிக்கோ குழந்தைகளுக்கோ எனக்கோ பார்க்க போறதுனா ரொம்ப கஷ்டம் அடுத்தகிட்ட வாங்கிதான் போகணும் இதே என்னுடைய நிலைமை வருமானங்கிறது எங்களுக்கு மாச வருமானங்கிறது எதுவுமே இல்ல எங்க கணவர் சம்பளமே என்னுடைய ரோல் வந்துட்டு இங்க தேவகோட்டை டிஸ்ட்ரிக்ட்ல ஒவ்வொரு ஏரியாலையும் ஒவ்வொரு பெண்களுக்கு மெயினா வந்துட்டு பெண்களுக்கு மார்பக புற்றுநோய் கர்ப்பப்பை வாய் புற்றுநோய்க்கான அறிவுஸ் வந்துட்டு கிரியேட் பண்றது தான் பிரெஸ்ட் கேன்சர் வந்துட்டு அறிகுறிக்கையும் வெளியே தெரிய வர்றது அப்படின்னு வந்துட்டு அதோட அறிகுறியே தெரியும் ஆனா வந்துட்டு முதல் ஸ்டேஜ்லயே எப்படி கண்டுபிடிக்கிறதுன்றத நாங்க சொல்லி கொடுக்கறதா அதுக்கான அறிகுறிகள் என்ன இருக்கும் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஸ்டேஜ்லயே எப்படி கண்டுபிடிக்கிறதுன்ற அவேர்னஸ் கிரியேட் பண்ணுப்ப வந்துட்டு தெரியாத மக்களும் நிறைய விஷயங்கள் தெரிஞ்சுக்கிறாங்க அவங்களும் வந்துட்டு அந்த இடத்துல அட்டன் பண்ணாதவங்களுமே வந்துட்டு அவங்க பக்கத்துல இருக்கிறவங்களுக்கு போய் சொல்றப்போ நிறைய பேர் அன்னைக்கு அட்டன் பண்ணாதவங்களும் நெக்ஸ்ட் டே வந்துட்டு இதை பத்தின தெரிஞ்சுக்கிட்டு நாங்க இது கேள்விப்பட்டு இந்த சென்டருக்கும் வராங்க இதுக்காக எங்களுக்கு மேமாகிரம் மிஷன் வந்துட்டு ப்ரொவைட் பண்ண ரோட்டரி கிளப்க்கு ரொம்ப நன்றி எனது ஊர் வந்து சருகணி கிராமம் கிராமத்தில் உள்ள நாகமத்தின்ற ஒரு கிராமம் இது இப்போ பார்த்தீங்கன்னா என் கணவர் வந்து கூலி வேலைக்கு தான் போறாரு நான் நூறு நாள் வேலைக்கு தான் போகிறேன் ஒரு ஹாஸ்பிட்டலுக்கு போகிறது இருந்தால் கூட ஒரு அதுக்கேற்ற மாதிரி வருமானம் ரொம்ப எங்களுக்கு ரொம்ப கம்மி தான் அதுக்கேற்ற வருமானம் எங்களுக்கு கிடையாது சாதாரண மதுரைக்கு போயிட்டு வந்தாவே ஹாஸ்பிட்டலுக்கு போனாவே ஒரு நபருக்கு நானூறுவா கிட்ட ஆகும் சாப்பாடு செலவு எல்லாமே கணவர் மனைவி போனாவே எட்நூறுவா ஆகும் எங்களுக்கு என்ன பண்ணுறது ஏற்பாடுன்னு தெரியல எங்கள் ஊரில் வந்து கேன்சரை பற்றி முகாம் ஒன்று நடத்தினாங்க அதை பற்றி எனக்கு விருப்பம் இல்லை ஆனால் அவங்க சொல்கிறதப்போ கேட்குறப்போ எனக்கும் அந்த ஆர்வமாக இருந்துச்சு அதை பற்றி நான் கேட்டு அதில் உள்ள பலனை நான் அறிஞ்சிக்கிட்டேன் அவங்க எப்படி கேன்சரை பற்றி சொல்லி கொடுத்தத மார்பகம் பா கேன்சர் கருப்பை உள்ள கேன்சர் அதனால என்ன நம்மளுக்கு பாதிப்பு இருக்கு அது எல்லாமே எங்களுக்கு சொல்லி கொடுத்தாங்க அது எங்களுக்கு நல்லா பலன் உள்ள இருந்தது கிட்ட மாதிரி நானும் ஒரு சிலருக்கு நான் சொல்லி கொடுப்பேன் வருஷத்துல கிட்டத்தட்ட நாங்கள் நாலாயிரத்தி அறுநூறு பெண்களை வந்து வாய் வாய் மார்பகம் கர்ப்ப ஸ்கிரீனிங் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் அதுல வந்து கிட்டத்தட்ட நீங்க பாத்தீங்கன்னா மேமோகிராம் அப்படின்ற மார்பகம் கர்ப்ப மார்பகம் புற்றுநோய கண்டுபிடிக்கிறதுக்கு ரொம்ப ரொம்ப முக்கியமான ஒரு பரிசோதனை நம்ம வந்து நாற்பது வயதுக்கு மேல அறுபது வயதுக்குள்ள பெண்களுக்கு தான் அந்த டெஸ்ட் நம்ம பண்றோம் இங்க தேவக்கோட்டையில பாத்தீங்கன்னா அந்த மாதிரி நாற்பது வயதுல இருந்து அறுபது வயதுக்குள்ள பெண்கள் வந்து கிட்டத்தட்ட ரெண்டாயிரத்தி அறுநூத்தி எண்பத்தி ஏழு பேர் இருக்காங்க ஆனா இந்த ஒரு வருஷத்துல அந்த ரெண்டாயிரத்தி அறுநூத்தி எண்பத்தி ஏழு பேர்ல நம்ம ஒரு எண்பத்தோரு பெண்களுக்கு மட்டும்தான் அந்த மேமோகிராம் எடுத்திருக்கோம் அதுவும் இங்க இருந்து நாங்க புதுக்கோட்டையில இருக்கிற எங்களோட இன்னொரு சென்டர் கமிச்சு தான் எடுத்திருக்கோம் மிச்சம் கிட்டத்தட்ட ரெண்டாயிரத்தி ஐநூறு பெண்களுக்கு வந்து நாங்க மேமோகிராம் வந்து எடுக்க முடியல நாங்க சொல்லிட்டு தான் இருக்கோம் ஆனா அவங்களால இங்க இருந்து புதுக்கோட்டை போக முடியல அதுக்கான காரணம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா இங்க இருக்க பெண்கள் எல்லாமே வந்து டெய்லியும் வேலைக்கு போய் டெய்லியும் சம்பாதிக்கிறாங்க சோ இங்க மேமோகிராம் நாங்க கேட்ட உடனே ரோட்டரியில இருந்து எங்களுக்கு அந்த மேமோகிராம் கொடுத்தனால இங்க இருக்க பெண்களுக்கு வந்து லாஸ் ஆகிற சம்பளமும் அவங்களுக்கு மிச்சமாகும் பிளஸ் இங்க இருந்து புதுக்கோட்டைக்கு மதுரைக்கு போயிட்டு வரும்போது அவங்களுக்கு ஆகக்கூடிய பஸ் ஃபேர் செலவும் அவங்களுக்கு மிச்சமாகும் சோ மேமோகிராமும் ஃப்ரீயா எடுக்கலாம் Yes. Yeah.
Our other flagship projects are in women empowerment, skills development, rural private construction, technical training for the disabled, this photograph is that they are all disabled children, um, hearing impaired or speech impaired, like when they come for technical training, lake restoration, vaccination, and many more. Yes. 